Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I am listening to music, but I have no wires. I love it. I even have my phone hidden over here. It is great. So, happy birthday to me. Tonight is not my birthday. My birthday is tomorrow, but I will be with family tomorrow. I just got informed that my Sunday plans got changed to tomorrow. So, I won't be here tomorrow night. I will be with family. Celebrating my 61st birthday. 61. I was born in 1960. 6 -zero. So it's kind of when you sign up for things and you have to like really scroll, scroll, scroll for your birth date. That's not cool, but it happens when you get older. I know uh, the teens and the, even the younger adults, you know. Yeah, well, there's mine. But when you get older, you have to scroll to look for the date, your birth date. The year, anyway, not the date. Not the, I mean, the, the month and the day is the same but the year the year as we get older our year goes down more so anyway I thought I would do my happy birthday tonight since I won't be here tomorrow night and I wish I could do that on YouTube but they have some really funky um, excuse me effects that they don't have a happy birthday or anything really that fits with anything that I want to do. So I don't know. Maybe they need some better special effects because they just don't have any. Okay. Well, anyway, so what I want to talk to you about tonight is revival, as you could see. Okay. So I have my prey. I'm going to have to stand up. Okay. I have my Pray for Revival t-shirt on from Harvest America. Okay. Oh, uh, you didn't see my jammies. So that's a good thing. All right. So, I woke up this morning thinking about revival. I have had so many great memories from revival. From revivals. As a matter of fact, um, I'm going to tell you, as soon as we get through praying, I hope you had an awesome day today. It seems like Saturday. It has seemed like Saturday all day. So tomorrow is actually Saturday. Tomorrow is actually my birthday. And uh, I've just been confused all day. So happy Good Friday. Um, so torturous for our Savior that went to the cross to die for us. But so awesome for us that he was willing to do that so he could offer us salvation and eternal life. I don't know what just popped up on my phone. Not surprised. Okay, well let's go ahead and pray. Let's do an opening prayer. Now let's see where the Holy Spirit wants to lead us today. I did print off some scriptures, so we're going to look some of them up. Not all of them, but some of them. Okay. God, we just come to you, and we are so thankful, God. So thankful for all the many blessings that you have given us, God, that you have created us for your plan and purpose. That you are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, God. You are our shelter in the storm. God, you are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are our everlasting Father. You, God, will judge the unrighteousness in all the world. Because you are a righteous judge. But God... You're mighty, magnificent, and powerful. But you are also loving and kind and compassionate and patient and faithful. And you keep all your promises, God. God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children, God. 
We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. We want to pray for the sick, God. We want to pray for the ones that are recovering from the motorcycle accident, God. And we want to pray for their families. We also want to pray for um, the lost, God. We pray for a revival. We pray that their eyes and their ears would be open to the truth, God that their hearts would be softened. We pray that the Holy Spirit would draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We pray for them to repent and to return, God. God, we just pray. We pray for all the disasters. We pray for this shooting in Washington, D.C. today, God. We pray that you would be with these families that were affected. God, just all the tragedies, that something seems to happen every day, God. We just pray that you would be with these people that are affected by that. We also pray, God, for people that have lost loved ones. We just pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. And that they would feel your presence, God, during this time of loss. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So lots of things happening all the time. Like every day something happens. So today a man uh, approached the barrier that they have in front of the Capitol so cars can't go down there. He ran into it. He ran over two officers um, when he ran into it killed one, injured one, got out with a knife or a machete, I don't know which, and so they shot him. So all three of them went to the hospital. So just pray for those families. And it's really, it makes me really sad that we have to doubt things that our government does. That we can't we don't have that blind trust for everything that happens anymore. But um, we just need to pray for them. But we need revival because people need Jesus. People are not in their right minds. They are... Um, they're just not in their right moral capacity mind. You know, why would you even do that? I mean, to me, that is um, suicide by cop because you know that they are protecting that building, whether people are in there or not. You know that there's a heightened protection right now. So we just need to pray for them. So that's what I was praying for. I was praying about that. That happened today. And so I want to share with you a song that I really, really like. I wish I could share the actual music and everything, but I do have it on my site that you're on right now. So maybe if you want, when I get off, you can go listen to it. So this is what I said about this song. I really like this song. And so when God woke me up with this one word on my mind, which was revival, um, this song later on in the morning popped into my head, and I go, okay, this is the song that I need to share. I'm going to take one of these out. kind of hurt my ears. I don't think I'd want to wear those all day. Okay. So I love this song and message by Rhett Walker Band. This is my word from God today, revival. We need revival. The old tent revival is what I have in mind, like this, like in this video. Our communities need revival, our states need revival, and our countries need revival through Jesus. I love this upbeat song, lyrics, and this video. A tent revival will fix everything if people come with an open mind and heart to hear God's word. That makes me laugh because I, I watch the Holderness family and she's always saying, that will fix everything. And that's what I was laughing about. 
And God reminded me yesterday that if we read his word from the Bible, it has power to cut to the heart that our words don't have. Our words as Christians do not have the power that God's word has. If we read God's word out of his Bible, it is spiritual and it cuts to the heart. And so, um, so this is the verse that I was brought to. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul, spirit, and of the joints in marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So that is powerful. And so when we read God's word to people, they should be revived. They sh it should impact them. I know when I hear God's word, it really impacts me, especially if I'm going through something and that scripture is speaking to me, then that is so impactful. I'm sorry, my blanket has uh, slept down. So I'm so thankful he reminded me of this. It is his job alone to change hearts and minds. I know it is Good Friday, but the word revival is what God laid on my heart today. I feel revived today. Thankful that Jesus loves the whole world so much that he laid down his life, offering us forgiveness, grace, salvation, and eternal life in heaven. If you are not saved, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. If you have strayed away, come back. Jesus is where you left him. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. So, I just, I'm so excited about revival. I want to plan a tent revival. <laughs> I don't, I think I've lost my mind. But I do, I know where I want to do it too. And uh, I know the perfect place to do it. But anyway, let's talk about revival. Let's talk about some of the scriptures in the Bible. And I want to show you my Bible. <laughs> that I'm using tonight it is I've had it since I was eight I got it when I was eight it was uh, the copyright is for 1963 so it's copyrighted in 1963 I also have a little bitty Bible that was my mom's and uh, it means a lot to me because it's just, it shows me, it shows me that there are scriptures in here that are important to her. Uh, I say are because she is with Jesus. She is living out the best part of Revelation. But see where she put little circles with a pen. I think that's so sweet. It's just so sweet. And uh, so some of this is in the New Testament, and this is just the New Testament. So I may use it some too, just to see if any of these scriptures that we're talking about line up with her little Bible. She had other Bibles too. This one was given to me by a Sunday school teacher when I was eight. And look. <laughs> It's showing its age. Look how old it looks. And I think it's a tinier print than my other one too. So let's talk about revival. So I looked up the um, I looked up the definition of revival. The word revival is from the Hebrew word Shaya. I don't know. Shea, Shea. I don't know. I am not. I do not read or speak Hebrew. In means to bring back to life, to restore to consciousness, or to restore to a previous condition. As stated in the Bible, it means restoration, rejuvenation, or renewal of interest after spiritual neglect, oblivion, and obscurity. 
So that's exactly what it is. We get so caught up in our lives that we push God to the side. And we even tell Him with our actions that we don't need Him, that we have we have got this thing called life and we will get with Him when we need Him. But that's not the relationship that God wants with us. He wants a very close relationship with us. He wants a relationship where we need Him for everything. And uh, I know maybe that sounds like a dictator, but really I think of it as a parent. Like He is my parent. He is my everlasting Father. And so I go to Him with the really small, insignificant things, like, God, where did I put this piece of paper? To me, I'm things like, um, I need this check to come in. <laughs> you know, please, please, we need it. To big things like, my son has leukemia, my husband has cancer, but praise Jesus and praise God. They are healed. They have been healed. They have both been healed. And so the things that have happened in my life have really cemented my belief in this book and everything that's in it. And I believe that every bit of it is true. I don't buy into the lie that this was reprinted in the 60s and they added things. I just don't. I just don't. So, okay, let's get into some of these scriptures. And I had time to number them, which makes it so much easier for me because I am going, ugh, look at this. I want you to look at this. This is how God works. This is Ezekiel, okay? My first verse is Ezekiel. Now this is on Ezekiel 40 and 41, but I just flip a couple of pages over to the left and I am at Ezekiel 37, which is where I'm supposed to be. Now that's a God thing. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe in God's perfect timing and I believe in God helping us and um, that's what I believe in. I believe in it all being God. Alright, so the Lord of the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Okay, this is Ezekiel thirty seven. And caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo they were very dry. So there were dry bones in the valley, like um, probably dead soldiers. You know, there were just bones. So that means that all the flesh was gone off the bones. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Can these bones be revived? Can they live? And, uh, and I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest, Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Wow, do you believe that God can revive these bones? Do you believe that God can revive our bones? Because sometimes we get like these dry bones and we, we have no zeal for our Christianity. It's just something that we do day in and day out and it's so humdrum and everything. But we need to be excited because not everybody gets this opportunity. Not everybody does. So God has created us for such a time as this and it is a hard time. It really is. But He created us and He equipped us for this time. Okay. God said unto these, Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin. 
and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone and when I beheld lo the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them above and there was no breath in them so it's just bones with skin on them and and muscle too sinews is muscle um, then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus saith, saith the Lord God come from the four winds O breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live this is miraculous there's a good song that goes with this story too called uh, rattle called rattle it's really good okay and by elevation worship I'm not listening to it right now but it came it is it is about this song and it's about Jesus uh, coming out of the grave also okay So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it saith the Lord the word of the Lord came again unto me saying okay I think that's another story that doesn't have anything to do with this but that is revival dead bones that's revival that's it sometimes we're dead in our Christianity like I said we're just going through the motions but there's no life there there's no zeal there's no excitement there's no, wow, I'm so excited that Jesus saved me. Now I want to share with everyone that I know that Jesus has saved me. We don't need to be like these dry bones. We need to be sharing the good news with people so that they will want to be revived. There has to be a revival before the rapture. There has to be a great awakening before the rapture and we are right here at the moment of revival before the rapture. We are right here at the moment of the last harvest before the rapture and the tribulation. We are right here. This is the time that God has chosen for us to have this great spiritual awakening. But it has to, we have to share. We have to share. And so if we go and we are sharing Christianity like, yeah, I'm saved. You know, I'm just so joyful. I'm saved and I'm joyful. And maybe that's how I look a lot of times. I don't know. But we need to be excited. There needs to be some excitement. We need, oh, we need revival so bad in our communities, in our states, just like when I wrote this, I really wasn't writing. It's the Holy Spirit that was writing through me. We need revival in our communities. We need revival in our states. We need revival in our countries. We need revival in the whole entire world. There are, there are people that have never heard about Jesus. We need our bones. We need flesh on our bones. We need breath. 
We need the Holy Spirit breath in our bones, and we need to be sharing with everyone that we see. Our bones need to be revived. They need to live. They need to live. Okay, well, let's move on from the story of Ezekiel, which I can't think of any story that would show revival better than that. I'm just, it's just perfect. Okay, so let's move on to Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah is the other way. I thought I was going in order, but sometimes I just really get mixed up on the order of the Old Testament. I know pretty much the order of the New Testament, but the Old Testament, not so much. Okay, 57.15 says this. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place, with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wroth. For the spirit should fall before me, and the souls which I have made. So we need our spirits revived. We need a humble spirit, but we need a revived spirit. We need to, our hearts revived. We need to be excited. We need to, what was that? To bring back to life the Cheya, the Hebrew word, to bring back to life. We need our spiritual lives brought back to life, like those dry bones. We need to be revived. We need our spirits revived. We need to um, have our hearts revived. That's what we need. These verses are so good. You know, sometimes the verses do not fit very well. And I, I go away going, well, what was that about? But when I looked at these verses, I thought a lot of these are perfect for this. Okay, so Isaiah 64, 1 through 4 says, He that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causes causeth the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things which we looked not for, thou camest down the mountains, flowed down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. So, you know, people don't know. They don't know. Um, I don't think that we really as Christians know the full righteousness, the full majesty of God. And I don't think we will until we get to heaven. I don't believe that we will, we can comprehend because he's spirit how, um, how awesome he is and how full of light he is. And one night I was laying on my bed and um, I had nearly fallen asleep. And I saw this image, and I really felt like it was God on His throne. And I did not see His face, because the light was so bright, I could not see who was on the throne, because the light was so bright. The light was blinding, it was so bright. And so I believe that's what God is. God is glowing with light, and truth, and perfection, 
in majesty and he's a mighty and powerful his voice thunders you know that is how I think of God and I really am not sure whether I perceive really what God is really who God is but I know who he is to me I know he's my everlasting father and I know he cares deeply for me he cares deeply for you he cares deeply for everyone in the world everyone okay so let's go to Habakkuk 3 2 and see what it says it is one of those that is so hard to find okay well maybe not O Lord I have heard thy speech and was afraid O Lord revive thy work in the midst of the years in the midst of the years make known in wrath remember mercy and so he is crying out to to the Lord to revive his work and in his wrath remember mercy God is so merciful God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran Selah his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise and his brightness was as the light he had horns coming out of his hand and there was the hiding of his power before him went the pestilence and burning coals went forth at his feet he stood and measured the earth he beheld and drove asunder the nations and the everlasting mountains were scattered the perpetual hills did bow, hills did bow his ways are everlasting and so that's kind of a glimpse at God at how I don't know who wrote Habakkuk I guess Habakkuk did anyway it says a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet upon Shigianoth so this was a prayer from Habakkuk to God so that's what it was God is mighty and powerful and I don't think that we will ever quite know until we get to heaven just how mighty and powerful he is okay well that was Habakkuk let's go to Psalms I just didn't do very good at putting these in order. Psalms 19, 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Now this is a psalm of David. I was wondering why it seemed to be rhyming. Um, where did I leave off here? Mm, altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, more than, more much than much fine gold sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb moreover by them is thy servant warned and in keeping of them there is great reward who can understand his errors cleanse thou me from secret faults keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins let them not have dominion over me then shall i be upright and i shall be innocent from the great transgression let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. 
So that was very good. The law of the Lord is perfect. Yeah, I read. I was afraid I didn't write, read the right one. So we need to remember all that. We need to revive ourselves in that in who the Lord is who God is okay so 6 is Psalm 22 27 and it says all the ends of the world shall remember and return unto the Lord and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee for the kingdom is the Lord's and he is the governor among the nations all they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him. And none can keep alive his own soul. That's a good, that's a good point right there. No one can keep alive their own soul. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness upon a people that shall be born that he hath done this. So God is the one that we need to look to for the revival. To remember who he is. Remember who he is. And we need to bow before him. And we need to praise him from one generation to the next. You know, I I can't say, I don't know. I think when we split it up a lot of the Sunday schools by age, I think we should have done it by, I think the multiple generations need to be in the classes because I think the younger ones need to be learning from the example of the older ones. If if the older ones are setting the right example. You know, sometimes you have older that are not setting the right example. You want to make sure that they're setting the right example so the younger ones can learn from that. Okay, so let's see where 7 is. 7 is Psalms 85. I may just read all of it. I love Psalms. Psalms just, it makes me so happy. Oh, I need to sneeze. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. Selah. Uh, thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Will thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again, that the people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in their land. Uh, mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and shall set us in the way of his steps. So that was really good. Will you not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Okay, where is 8? Matthew 6, 33 is 8. Matthew 6. This poor little Bible 
has had it. So it's nearly as old as I am. 633. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So um, we need to seek God's kingdom first. And everything will be added unto us. And we need not worry. Need not worry about tomorrow. Because God's got it in his hand. He knows what tomorrow brings. He knew today that that shooting was going to happen in Washington. Um, which the shooting took place because of the officers that were protecting themselves. Okay, Acts 2, 1 through 47. That's going to be long. But I think it's going to be about Pentecost, which was a great revival. Okay, Acts 2, 1 through 47. I'm going to get me some, I made me some lemonade. I'm quite excited. My first lemonade of the summer. I use country time. I cheat. I don't make the real stuff. I do sometimes, but I usually don't have the lemons and all the stuff that I need. I just buy this stuff and put some water in it. It's fine. It'll be okay. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling, and there, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under the heaven under heaven now when this was noised abroad the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language uh, this is a massive revival massive revival with the holy spirit leading the way I think maybe this is what we need. We need this massive revival with the Holy Spirit leading the way, with the Holy Spirit telling us what the people need to hear. Um, I think this would be good. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontus and in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. They thought they were drunk. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out 
of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy I believe that is going on right now I believe there is a lot of the Holy Spirit pouring out on people and they are prophesying and they are having visions and they are having dreams and I will show wonders in heaven there are wonders in heaven going on daily daily I saw some pictures last night of a rainbow above a cloud a circular rainbow above a cloud and you know just really bizarre things and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood and we've seen blood moons and we have seen um, <laughs> eclipses <laughs> we've seen both uh, before that great and notable day of the Lord come so he is talking about the rapture before the rapture happens all this is going to happen and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved amen all you have to do is call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved believe who Jesus is believe that he is God's one and only son you men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to be, to see corruption thou hast made known to me the ways of life thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance men and brethren let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried and his sepulchre is with us unto this day Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul would not, was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. The word of God cuts to the heart. We read that earlier, Hebrews 4.12. God brought me this verse yesterday. I'm going to start using it. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit into the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of thought, thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4.12 Okay, well that's what he's talking about, that they got cut. Their heart 
lost my place. I got so excited, I lost my place. Okay, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about three thousand. Three thousand were saved at Pentecost. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. The fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. We need a Holy Spirit revival. We need a revival like this. We need excitement about salvation we need revival and I may end right there because that was just so good how close was I to the end that was nine yeah that was just a great place to stop because we started over here in the Old Testament talking about dry bones and then we talked about the coming of the Holy Ghost and how exciting and how wonderful that is. So I think that is a great place to stop. Whew. Hey, there's Daddy. Go. My son came in here. His Daddy's home. He can go turn the TV. Hey, Daddy's home. Go let him, go tell him what you want, okay? All right, so uh, I left my notebook over there. I wish my son understood to hand me my notebook, but there's lots over there. So I'll be right back. Hey, go in there with Daddy. Daddy's home, okay? Thank you. Sorry about that. I thought I had everything I needed. Okay, so these are the notes from today. I want, my handwriting is horrible, but I want you to look at this. It says Tent Revival. Because that's just what I was thinking this morning. I was thinking Tent Revival. Um, I got saved under a Tabernacle Revival. We used to have tabernacle revivals at our church, and so that's when I got saved. I got saved when I was 31, and tomorrow I'll be 61. So May the 14th will be 30 years since I got saved. And during that 30 years, God has transformed my heart. Um, it wasn't an overnight transformation. It's a, it's a journey, and it's a learning journey to where we go through things and we learn from them. And uh, I feel like we learn from them so we can encourage and share with others. Okay, well they, these are my notes. Good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day today, child, of mercies and blessings, of new opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus. 
the new beautiful spring day child go enjoy some sunshine and drink in the beauty of my creation today well I should have done that I did go out today um, and it was a beautiful day I probably should have gone somewhere and enjoyed it but I felt like I was in a hurry so thank you God for a new day of mercies and blessings of new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus with others Thank you for a new beautiful day. I believe that I will go enjoy some sunshine this afternoon, God. I just want to rest in you today. Help me to be more humble in my thoughts, God. Child, be still and know that I am God, and I am sovereign over all things and events that concern you. Do not worry, but rest in me. Revival is coming. The great spiritual awakening is happening now. Many are or hmm wow it's bad when you can't read your own handwriting oh, okay it is what I thought it was many are traveling to share the good news of Jesus but every community needs to have a revival you come to Jesus. You came to Jesus at revival. Many have gotten saved at revivals. The spreading of the gospel is going out to all. All are invited into my kingdom through Jesus. They need to know that they do not need to stay in the bondage of sin and can be free by the blood of the Lamb, my one and only Son, Many still do not know the truth, and many don't care, and many do not believe. You saw that the other night. Last year, last year did damage to the work that your team had done. This was the plan of our enemy to divide the believers and silence the message for a year to keep people from being saved. But it actually increased salvations because of the online services which opened doors to Christianity all over the world. Many new believers can come and many prodigals returned, but many more need to be invited into my kingdom by my children. A tent revival is needed all over the world. This is what your prayer needs to be. Revival all over the world. Revival in your country and revival in your communities. Revive the cold revive the cold dark winter has passed and much needs to be done to bring in this last harvest before the upcoming tribulation when the evil takes control for a season they are trying now but the restrainer is holding them back my children also are holding it back my children are the majority they are the loud few that lie and say most agree with them. These are lies from the father of lies, our enemy. I said, thank you, God, for sharing all of this with me. I see it all clearly in your word. The great spiritual awakening through revival and then rapture, tribulation, and Jesus comes to destroy evil. Your perfect plan and your perfect timing is always God. While I wait, I will plan revival. Thank you for choosing me for this time and season. Thank you for meeting me today, God. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient to me in all I ask. Every day, child, you are my messenger. So remember, every day there is a message from me. Today it is revival. How can people choose a random day to celebrate my son going to the cross for them if they do not believe that he really did? They need the truth of my word. Their ears need to hear my word. My word cuts to the heart and softens the heart that was hardened. The reunion is soon, child, but the harvest has to be gathered through salvation in Jesus. Be ready, child and keep walking in truth and light with Jesus until his glorious appearing. Then your race ends and you enter into the goodness of the garden. 
And I said, Maranatha, God. Because he took me back to the garden. He took me to the garden last night. We started out in the garden last night. And then we ended in Revelation today. <laughs> we started in the graveyard. And we ended up with the Holy Spirit revival. <laughs> God is just so good. The Holy Spirit is just so good to lead me where I need to go. Because I am not equipped for this. I am not a preacher. I do not do not claim to be a preacher. I, I do claim to be a messenger because that's what God calls me to be. He calls me to share His truth and the gospel of Jesus. And sometimes I want to use my words more than I want to use His words. But like Hebrews 4.12 says, His words cut to the heart. His words divide asunder the soul. His words are powerful. My words are not powerful. My words to people are my opinion. But His words are truth. And His words have the power. So, I'm ready for a revival. I don't know. We haven't done one in our church in a long time. I may see if my pastor's up for a revival. I, I know our community needs a revival so badly. It would be so good to have a revival. Okay. So I'm going to use the E-band to do the salvation message tonight. I really like the E-band. I use it a lot because it's really easy and it covers a lot of things. Okay, so gold. First of all, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power... For salvation to everyone who believes. Oh, that is powerful. Hey, my friend Josie, how are you doing? So the gold represents God, the creator of all, who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light, and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God's love, God loves you, and he wants you to have a person, he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's Son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. Jesus and God are one. And so that's gold. I don't know why my color on my other camera is so bad. I adjusted it the other day. But like the gold is not. The gold looks more yellow. I don't know. Okay. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that we all have sinned and fallen short and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to live in this sin. Sin's yucky. Sin is also bondage, like I read earlier. Sin is, it's fun for a while, but then it's bondage. Okay, the first question Mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? And so this is what we're talking about today. Good Friday. Jesus paid the price with his blood on the cross. So the red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but we'll have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. So that's the good news. Is that Jesus paid the price for all of us. For you and for all of us. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, 
Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So this question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? And so if you have not accepted Jesus' gift, this is the most important decision of your life. It is the decision that determines where you spend eternity. So let's pray this prayer and I will leave some space so that um, you can repeat after me. So God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. So if you said this prayer, the green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. So we have the heart. We have the heart. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbors as ourselves. Love God, love people. And so then we have the symbol for the Bible. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and His love. And then we have the little praying figure. We have the little praying figure. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with Him. And then we have the water. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person like being born all over again. And next we have uh, the little fellowship thing. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. And then we have the world with the cross. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in Him. Tell as many people as you can. Alright, so those are the things that we need to do. So if you prayed this prayer and you invited Jesus into your heart to be your Savior, then welcome to the Kingdom Family of God. Your name is now being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, His Son. And do read the Bible every day and start in Matthew. That didn't tell you where to start, but Matthew is a good place to start because it's going to tell you about Jesus. And that is the Savior that you just invited in to be your Savior. Okay, He is the only Savior too. I don't know why I said it like that. Okay, so, oh, let's see. Oh, I forgot to use my mom's Bible. Well, maybe the next time I do this. Which may be Sunday night and it may be Monday night. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, I think I did everything that I came to do tonight. Mm. 
me give you a blessing from God. Got to find numbers in here. I have it marked in my other Bible. Number 6. 24 through 26. Well, there we are. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face. The Lord make his face <laughs> shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We all need peace. We need revival. We really need revival. I'm going to work on that. I really am. I feel like we need it. We need it badly. I know. Let us worship. They're doing so great. They're like traveling all over the place. Doing live praise and worship and revival. And people are getting saved and they're getting baptized. And it's awesome. But I think our communities need that too. I really think they do. Our communities, our small, our smaller communities need revival. Our bones are dry. We need the breath of the Holy Spirit burning in our hearts. We need to not be okay that people are going to face the wrath of God. We need to try harder to share God's truth. Not our words, but God's truth. God's truth. Hebrews 4.12 God's truth. Okay. Well, my friend Josie was here for a second and she left. So I don't know where she went. She probably got a call or something. So I'm going to pray for her family and uh, some other people that I know. I'm also going to pray for the children that are missing. Um, for someone to rescue them. For the rescuers. For people to be put in jail and that abduct children not not just people to be put in jail people that break the law in that way for them to go to prison that breaks my heart okay well let's pray Let's pray so I can get off of here. i got to go feed my child. I may eat something else tonight, too, because tomorrow's my birthday. But I might not. I might just stick to my fasting. All right. God, we just come to you, and we are so thankful, God. So thankful for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, God, that you protect us, you provide for us. You are our creator. You knew us before we were even born, God. You knew me before I was in my mother's womb. And that just blows me away. You knew what plan you had for my life before I was born. God, I just pray for Josie and her family. That you would bless them. That you would protect them. That you would provide for them. That you would keep them healthy, God. I pray the same for my family. I pray for my daughter and her husband and uh, my grandchildren, God. I pray for blessings, protection, and provision. I pray for our family, for the same for our family, God. God, we need you so desperately, God, and we do need you to raise up our bones. They do get dry sometimes. Revive us, God. Give us the revival that we need. So we can just go out there and we can just share the gospel of Jesus to everyone that we see. God, that we can share your words, not ours. Your words from your, um, your God-breathed word that is so powerful, God, that we would share it. We pray for uh, Mr. Mike and the boys, God. We pray for the lost, God. We just pray you would open their eyes and their ears, God. 
and that you would um, allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home. We pray for the shooting today, the shooting last last week and the one the week before. God, we just pray for all these people that have been involved. Many innocent families were impacted by, to me, what is senseless, what makes no sense to me. I pray for truth, God. I pray for all truth to rise in all of these situations, God. In everything, I pray for truth. I pray for corruption to be revealed, God, in our country and all over the world. I pray, God, for these innocent children, teens, and young adults, and even older adults, too, that are stuck in this human trafficking bondage, God, that they would be set free that there would be rescuers that would come and that they would rescue them, God. And I pray for the safety for the rescuers and I pray for these perpetrators, God, to be in prison for a very long time and not to get out, for the corruption in our judicial system that prevents that, for it to go away, for the for Lady Justice to have her blindfold back on again, God. For there to be blind justice and not justice according to who you are. God, I pray for those things. I just cry out for revival, God. I pray for this great spiritual awakening that we are witnessing, God. That it would just get stronger. That there would be a Jesus movement that cannot be stopped. God, I pray for our youth. I pray for them to seek you every day through your word, through prayer, and through praise, and I pray for their families to be blessed, to be protected, and to be provided for God. God, Christianity is a journey, and my journey started nearly 30 years ago, God, and I have you have taught me so much, and I am so thankful and grateful for everything that you've taught me, for all the many blessings that you've bestowed upon me, for all the many blessings as people that are in my life, God. I just thank you. And uh, we just all love you, God, with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. Help us to be the examples that you want us to be. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well... I think I did everything I was supposed to do here. So, have an awesome rest of your night. Have an awesome tomorrow. Enjoy my birthday tomorrow. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to go eat breakfast tomorrow, I think, at um, Big Cup. We'll have to start cooking tonight, I think. Or maybe, I don't know, I may have time to cook tomorrow really like cold potato salad so anyway that's a problem for tomorrow <laughs> we're not so what do we read tonight we're not supposed to worry about tomorrow that's tomorrow tomorrow will take care of itself gotta take care of right now so much love much love and cyber hugs till I see you again and I hope to see some of you again all right, good night.